Minister, we have just received this message from Commander Brady. He's awaiting your instruction. Right. Thank you, Malcolm. Could you get Commander Brady on the phone for me, please? And tell Miranda to come in. Right away, sir. Thank you. make difficult decisions every day. The key to making the right decision is not to answer straight away, not to let emotion or your gut interfere, but rather to wait and gather all the information you can. I have to know what I am dealing with. Miranda is my chief legal advisor. I've worked with her for over 15 years. She is the only person I trust. She has just informed me that under current international law, generally, nuclear weapons are prohibited. Now, our foe has all but broken this code of conduct, and it will be for others to judge them of their crimes, we as a state have the right to bear arms in pursuit of the self-defense of our nation so long as we honor the laws of war. Sadly, time is not a luxury I possess, and the threat is all too imminent. The devil is in motion, and I fear that tonight, fighting fire with fire may be high on our list of options. Well, they're barking mad if they think that we're going to agree with those. <laughs> agree? In most cases, it would be relatively clear which form of action is correct. A military response of a nuclear nature would be the only realistic way of saving our nation. But here there is too much at stake. The threat to human life, civilian life, it, it can't be overlooked. The right to self-defense is, is the oldest and most logical right available. But who has the highest claim on survival? I mean, that's not something I can interpret. <sighs> Say, flipping a coin. <laughs> As I've said before, the law clearly states that the use of a nuclear weapon is generally prohibited. Surely, in our situation, there is an exception. <laughs> What use is my right to self-defence if my means to do so is not a possibility? Self-defence must be of higher importance than any consequential humanitarian principle. But in this instance, perhaps it's both legal and illegal. A legal dilemma. The issue here is that both the fundamental and the decision-making process, neither one can be overturned by the other. Yes, it's possible to make an unvalidated interpretation. However, it would be investigated by the international community of states. And they might not see it your way. Sorry, sir. The deputy is on the phone. Line three. Thank you, Malcolm. Well, Malcolm, could you ask Commander Brady to compile a population breakdown both for here and abroad, including our own troops stationed overseas and an estimated blast radius? Yes, sir. Thank you. 
I'll be in my office. Don't dwell on those numbers, Prime Minister. They won't help. Thank you, Miranda. Stay by the phone. Find me something. We need a compromise. We need a decision within the hour. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I'll speak to you later. Goodbye. My Deputy Prime Minister is what you might call a patriot. Normally, that level of commitment is hugely welcome. His energy has certainly kept me going through many tough days, but tonight is not so black and white. As our nation puts itself to bed, a foreboding fog sweeps through my mind. Either by my hand or by those of our enemy, innocent people will die. I know exactly which way my deputy would vote, and yet it must be me who pulls the trigger. Come in. Sir, here are the figures you asked for. Thank you, Malcolm. Malcolm? Yes, sir? A glass of scotch when you have a moment. A full one. Right away, sir. As I said before, war is never black and white. No one is solely to blame. One man may start a conflict while it falls to another to make the decision to engage himself and his country. When I look at these figures, I do not see a bright green arrow leading me forwards. Instead, I see a list of the dead. How many would I say if I give in to the enemy's wishes? How many would I say if I don't? How many of my citizens standing guard for me at the enemy's gate, waiting for my orders only to be struck down by the very hand that sent them? Are you married, Malcolm? Engaged, sir. Chosen the date? April 19th, next year. I've been married to my wife for 27 years. We have two children together. My son's abroad at the moment. Gap year, you know. Where has he gone? Everywhere. Thailand, Vietnam, South America, New Zealand. It seems very popular these days to take a gap year. 
explore the world, have a laugh, discover yourself. But the truth is, the world's a mess. My fiance is abroad as well. She's a reporter. World news. She's covering the fighting. She loves that job. Says it makes her feel significant. Like she's part of something bigger. It seems unfair that I must be the one to decide whether or not they live to see them. Ironic, isn't it, that after centuries of exploration and scientific discovery, we are still left puzzled by the intricacies of the universe. On the moon, man may master gravity, and yet, on Earth, we cannot escape the laws of chance when faced with undeniable tragedy. Malcolm, could you please get Commander Brady on the phone? Yes, sir. Commander? I have Mr. Dillon for you. Come on. 